Folks, in the corporation, there used to be CEO, COO, and CFO. There was no one else in the upper hierarchy, but now the new designation, Chief Technology Officer, is the most important part of that hierarchy of running a corporation. Uh, some of the famous names that you might know is Anish Chopra and Vivek Kundra. But we want to introduce you today to another Chief Technology Officer from Lockheed Martin for Enterprise IT and Data Solutions, Mahesh Kalwa. And welcome, sir. Thank you, Ramesh. As a Chief Technology Officer, you are probably on the forefront of technology. Mm -hmm. uh, we hear a lot about this cloud computing. We understand it's somewhere in the sky, <laughs> someone is going to keep our data. But you can probably explain us a little better exactly what is cloud computing? Great question. Actually, cloud computing has become more prevalent in the last couple of years, but mm. it has been there out there for a very long time. Mm. It had different names, but what's what's really propelling the cloud computing in the in the field right mm. now is the success of virtualization. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you have a bunch of servers in the in the network that are connected to each other, but mm. are virtualized mm -hmm. so you can have your applications on one server but it could be residing on many different servers at the same time mm -hmm. so that is driving or propelling the cloud computing so you can have applications ramped ramp up the applications and ramp down very easily and you can manage the applications very easily so you don't have to build the app uh, the servers ground up for every single system that you're going to take live mm -hmm. but when you want to make an application available on mm -hmm. a piece of hardware it's available out there because it is connected interconnected to virtualization you know for people ordinary folks like us that use it in our business and are in our personal lives how does it affect us how what's the difference of today's technology that we used and cloud computing very good question again uh, Ramesh used to be enterprises used to bring technology to your home fronts now it has become the other way around you know the people the, as as home users we are taking we are getting used to the applications in the cloud mm -hmm. for example gmail right on mm -hmm. google cloud or hotmail on microsoft these used to be used we are all using we have been using for years mm -hmm. now think about that making that available for enterprises so you don't have to build this expensive mail systems at your enterprise level but you could jump on a cloud that is being provided by google or by a microsoft or whoever it is and you don't you don't spend that much money to bring up the mail services so that is one good example of use of cloud computing okay uh, I understand that portion of it but how safe is it I mean here it was service were in my office and now you're saying service are in the sky or with Google and Microsoft how do I trust that they're going to uh, make sure my information is not breached or leaked or misused or abused or I find it when you Google it all my information on the uh, Google all these companies are having an immense amount of security protocols in place so that your information is not breached. As a matter of fact, whenever you're connected to the network, you are vulnerable either way. But to have our information safely restored at a company which their, their core business is uh, computing, mm -hmm. they might be probably be able better position to protect our information mm -hmm. than companies are having our own networks but are connected to the Internet in any way. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, these companies, one of the things that small co organizations need to make sure is when they are getting onto the cloud computing is to make sure that they understand the security posture, make sure it is part of the, your agreement with these companies saying that there wouldn't be any security breach mm -hmm. and what have you. Mm -hmm. So that would ensure that uh, you have that same kind of security as if you are within your own enterprise. If I was a layman, so I will say I need to do co cloud computing is because they got 90 different programs up there uh, and I may not be using all of them or once in a while mm -hmm. so it's cheaper for me to use their once in a while application instead of buying it putting it on my server and paying for it every uh, every month or every year absolutely it's like the pay-as-you-go model right pay by the drink model whatever you want to call it so you pay for what you use rather than if if some applications are you sell them or probably very rarely use it, you don't have to pay for those. Mm -hmm. You're paying for what you use.
which is what the model needs to be and which is what the government is also adapting in the in the government sector as you mentioned anish and vivek are both pushing this mm -hmm. for federal agencies which mm -hmm. is a key element of providing the same services or better services at a cheaper cost now government has a much bigger reason uh, for the security of their service particularly the defense department as you know, every few months we hear the Russians penetrated, the Chinese penetrated, and so on and so forth. How are they going to take it to the cloud computing? What they have been thinking about or what they have been pushing is something called a concept of a private cloud. So where you are not connected, you're not on the Google's cloud or Amazon's e uh, Elastic cloud, but you have your own private cloud. Uh -huh. So which is um, for uh, like an agency like Department of Homeland Security or Defense, they'll have a diff, uh, DOD wide cloud, uh -huh. which is open for all the applications that are used by the, um, by the users within the DOD. One example is human resources. It is common across all the different departments within that agency or uh -huh. all the agencies within that department, whatever the case may be. Uh -huh. So you are not recreating or reinventing the wheel over and over again for different departments uh -huh. and have this one big private cloud and you can run the applications seamlessly as if it is meant for you and most of these um, software as a service which is the application which sits on the cloud computing you can configure them so that uh, one department within uh, say for example in DOJ FBI has their own ability of um, uh, customizing it versus Office of Justice programs which mm -hmm. can customize it to their look and feel so these applications which sit on uh, on cloud computing are configurable mm -hmm. so a concept of multi-tenant mm -hmm. ability so that provides the cheaper better and faster I'm so impressed with the technology it has really put this country forward and brought the rest of the world so closer so fast on the wings of technology right? global village yes. Global village that's what we are right you know there are like a lot of kids out there uh, they of course they take to the Twitter and they take to the uh, Facebook and the others so much better than all of us yes. uh, and I, I sometimes you get lost in it, you know. Uh, you being there, being a chief technology officer, uh, can you give them a career suggestion that yes, Twitter, Facebook, they're just tools, not a lifetime choices? Absolutely. I mean, I, we are all the digital migrants, even including me. Uh -huh. we, we came into this, and all these kids who are uh, from the last 10, 15 years are digital natives. They've been born with these different tools. Uh -huh.